Hello and welcome, I'm Dave. Today I'm sharing the best solution I've found for user registration and login authentication in my Next.js app. And I'll provide links to all resources in the description below. I'll also provide a link for you to join my Discord server where you can discuss web development with other students and you can ask questions that I can answer and receive help from other viewers too. I look forward to seeing you there. Within the last month, I've published a Next.js course that already has over 100,000 views, and thank you for watching. But today, I want to show you my current favorite solution for adding user registration and login authentication to my Next.js app. Say hello to Kind, a simple, powerful authentication solution. And Kind offers all of the features that I get requests to make tutorials for, like passwordless authentication, social logins, and login credentials where you can request a forgotten password, single sign-on for enterprise systems, multi-factor authentication, multi-tenancy, beautiful dashboards, feature flags, and I could go on. Kind's free tier includes an amazing 7,500 active users and unlimited sign-ins, and they can scale with your business while keeping their prices low low on their other tiers. And the free tier includes single sign-on with unlimited social logins and multi-factor auth, basic roles and permissions, also custom domains, user management, unlimited teams, and just outstanding features for a free tier. Okay, now full disclosure here, I only allow sponsors on my channel that get me stoked about their product or service. If I wouldn't advocate for them, they're not on my channel. And Kind is sponsoring this video. So that said, I'm very stoked about Kind and all of the features you can add to your applications using their free tier. It's pretty amazing. So let me show you how it works. And today I'm going to show you how easy it is to add Kind to a Next.js project that uses the new app router. And I'll leave a link in the description to my completed code in GitHub. And I'll also leave a link to the Kind Next.js starter kit that Kind offers on GitHub. So both of those resources will help you get started with Kind in your Next.js app. Okay, I've already created a new project in Next.js with Create Next App, and I don't know when you're watching this tutorial, if you're watching it within the first few days that I've made it, we're currently on Next version 13.4.9, as you see here in my package JSON. However, if you're watching this in the future, maybe Next has released a new version. If you want to have the exact same response I do, you might want to install this version of Next, but you can go ahead and try the latest version version as well. Note there's one other dependency you're going to need, and you can see it here in my package JSON right there. So if you want this dependency, you could open the terminal and do npm i for install, and then type out this dependency so you can work with kind auth as well as we work through this tutorial. Now we're back at kind.com and you can see the start for free button. If you don't have an account yet, go ahead and do that. Sign up quickly for an account, it's easy, and then I'll meet you at the dashboard. I'm signed into the Kind dashboard. Now I had a checklist when I first signed in as a new user. I currently don't, but you may have one here, so it may not look like mine. But let's go to settings. And from settings, we want to scroll down to applications. From applications, we're going to find where we can add a new application. I've already created a test app here. So you wanna go ahead and add an application as well. And once we get into that then, after you add your application, you can see we have where we can edit the name and you can choose a language framework. I have Next.js. They have a nice link here to their Next.js docs as well. We have an ID for the app and we scroll down and we have app keys. Now we're going to need all of this information that you see right here and you can even copy the secret and the client ID and a domain. Now you may need to set this up in your settings as well. So I have personalized mine with DGTC for Dave Gray Teaches Code at dotkind.com. So that could be back in the settings as you set up your new account. Also, there's a couple of callback URLs that you will need here. Notice I've got in localhost 3000 because I'm in dev mode and you should be too at first. So we'll be running our project on localhost 3000 and not a deployed URL yet, but you need both of these in here as well. Now you'll need to go back and forth between VS Code and this web page to copy these and then put them in your .env.local file. Let me show you mine. We're back in VS Code and here is my .env.local file. Now I'm not worried about you copying any of these because 
they won't work for you, and I'm going to delete them all after this tutorial. However, you can see I've got the kind client ID, the kind client secret that we copied out of there. I believe we also had the issuer URL, which is the one that I pointed out has DGTC in here for mine. Other than that, we have a kind site URL. This should just be your local host 3000 for now. Uh, we're going to log out and redirect to localhost 3000 when we log out. So you'll want that in here for that value. And we're going to go to a dashboard page when we successfully log in. So we'll be redirected to that page. So just copy those values and of course put in your client ID and client secret and your URL here for the issuer as well. We're back in the browser in the kind settings for my test app. Now we want to be able to go ahead and add some social logins as well as our passwordless login that we're going to use today. So to do that, we need to come back out of our app. So I'll go back to home, I'll go to settings and here I'm going to choose authentication. So for authentication, we could configure passwordless or password and we can do this on a per app basis. So we will go back to that specific app. But right now I have a Google social connection and a GitHub social connection and we can add more. So if you click add connections, you can scroll through and choose the social logins that you wanna use. And then of course click save. I'm just going to cancel out since I've already added those to mine. So now let's go back to the specific app. So we go under applications. I'll go back to my test app. And from here, I need to go to authentication once I'm in that test app. And there we can choose passwordless or password. And then we also have our social connections and you need to enable both of those as well. So now we should see a GitHub button and a Google button when we want to log in, as well as having a passwordless option. With those kind auth settings complete, we're now back in VS Code and we're ready to start adding some code to pull our project together. The first file we wanna create is inside the source directory. If you choose not to create a source directory when you create your Next.js app, just know the middleware file needs to be at the same level as the app directory, not inside the app directory. So now let's check out this middleware file. You can see I'm importing auth middleware from kind as we see up here and notice the slash server at the end of this import. And after that, we're exporting the auth middleware down here. Now everything in between is just configuring a matcher and this matcher is actually what they recommend in the next JS docs. It's not specific to kind auth in any way but you want your file to look like this for the middleware. And now inside your app directory, you need an API directory. And inside of the API directory, you need an auth directory. And then inside of the auth directory, you need a directory that has brackets. And I'm just going to click on the route TS file, but then you can see this directory up here, brackets with kind auth with the A capitalized. So you need API auth kind auth, and then you need to put in this route TS file. And your route TS file needs to look exactly like this. This is the route that Kind uses to handle those redirects with the sign in and registration and all of those things for your application. So just make sure your file looks just like this. And remember, you can get all of my source code at the link in the description. Now back in our components, if we look at the page file, I have just got a static component here where I'm showing some things on the home page. And I am using Tailwind CSS in this project, the kind auth SDK that I have also provided a link to in the description does not use Tailwind. So just a note on those differences, there's going to be a few other differences. And one notable one is as we look at the layout.tsx, I prefer to extract the nav bar and have a separate component. They did not do that. So if you look at their SDK, uh, source code, you'll see that just all of the code that you would put in a navbar component is inside this layout component. You can see I've only got a few Tailwind classes here and everything else is your basic layout component for Next.js. So let's go ahead and look at that navbar component because this is where things get interesting. So at the top, I'm importing image from Next.js so we can use it for our image if we pull that in from our user data, say from GitHub or from Google. Other than that, I'm importing git kind server session, register link, login link, and logout link, all things we could use in the nav bar. So here I'm getting is authenticated and a git user function from git kind server session. 
And then I'm getting the user information with that get user function. Now note, these are not React hooks. This is a server component. So we're just getting this information right here inside of this server side rendered component. Now inside of the component itself where we're returning some JSX or TSX, if you will, if we come down here, we're just checking that is authenticated. And if we are authenticated, or actually if we're not authenticated, notice the exclamation mark here. So if we're not authenticated, we're going to show the login link and the register link. But if we are authenticated, then we're going to go ahead and show a picture if we're pulling in a profile picture from GitHub or Google or any of those other social logins that you choose. Or if we don't have a picture, we're going to give a circle that's going to give our initials, like mine would show DG here, because notice we're just pulling this first element out of each one of those. Or I said element, it's really the first letter because we're performing that on a string right there. After that, then we're just putting the full name here. And of course, we've got the family name as well. So given name is the first name, family name is the last name. And then we're showing the logout link because we're logged in. So also a quick note on using the image component. Notice I imported that image component from Next.js. That's something you won't see inside of that kind SDK source code either. And that's okay, the way they did it just used a actual image tag. However, if you use this image component like I do in Next.js, you need to set up any one of those social auths inside of that next.config.js. And I've done both of those here for you for Google and for GitHub. So you need to put in this remote patterns for images and of course set up each domain that you're going to pull images from. And now the only other component to really look at is our dashboard. So let's take a look at that. I'll click on the page TSX. It is also a static page. So we're just going to show that auth is successful because we'll be redirected here after a successful login. So now that I've gone over the code, let's open it up and see how it all works. I'll press control in the back tick to open a terminal window and type npm run dev which should start the application up. And once it's up and running, we should get a notification right here. Yes, it's running now. I'm going to do control and click to launch it at localhost 3000 in the browser. And here's the application. We've got a link to the docs as well. So we can sign in or sign up. Now, if you haven't signed up already and you attempt to sign in, so like using an email here, if it doesn't find you, it's going to ask if you want to create an account, which that's a nice feature as well. So what I want to do first is just sign in with GitHub. I'll continue with GitHub and we should be taken to the dashboard page. Now, if it's your first time signing in with GitHub, it will probably ask you if you authorize that connection as well. But here's our dashboard page and you can see I've got my image in here from GitHub. I've got my name and a logout link. Everything's as expected. It's really just that simple. If I go back to the sign in, we could sign in another way. So let me sign in again, and I'm going to use my email. And now if they don't find this user, which they should, it would ask me to create a user. And that's probably what it would do for you at this point. Right now, I'm just going to log in and look, they're going to email me a code. When I get that code, I can come back and enter it in here. You've probably done something like that before. That's how passwordless authentication works. And then you can continue. So it's verifying that you are who you say you are as far as using that email. Now I'm sure you can already see KindAuth is easy to configure and offers far more than I've shown here today. But I think I've covered everything you need to get up and running with a full featured user registration and authentication system quickly, be it a personal project or even an enterprise level solution. I know I'll be using KindAuth in an upcoming full stack project on my channel. If you haven't yet, set up your free account with Kind today. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection, and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you, and thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.